there is power in a name. And if your name brings power, the image that's connected to the power will speak on behalf of that name. You can't have a good name and a bad image. The math ain't mathing. This industry that we be in, if you want to say that, but everybody is so like stereotypical, right? Everybody's so vain. So let's say I see a homeless person. Mm -hmm. Should I treat him bad because of the way he look? That homeless person could be one of the best people you meet. So we're talking about two different layers of image, right? So like image is short for imagination. It's what you imagine. Come on. You understand what I'm saying? So like you have pinky and you imagine pinky to be this entrepreneur that's getting it, that's hustling. But it's because you hear my name. That makes you imagine a certain thing about me. Who's perceiving that image is different, but the image and the name goes hand in hand. I don't play about my image because I don't play about my name. When you hear my name, I want you to think about like how people think about Oprah. Mm -hmm. Like there's some regality to that. There's some specialness about that. There is like this is roy this is crown royalty. And now my image has to reflect that because if this has regality and royalty, and then you start looking at the image and you're like, well, this ain't matching up. Something don't match. There's a disconnect. Mm. So it's so important as you continue to build your brand, your image and your name has to go hand in hand. Mm. And that's that is how successful brands and businesses are made. Yo, what's poppin', man? Shout out to all my new and returning viewers of the J-Hill Podcast. If you've not done so already, Make sure you hit that subscribe button. But this episode is sponsored by Lux Legacy. I'm rocking their Motion over Emotion t-shirt right now. And I like this clothing brand not only because they got me looking good. You know what they say when you look good, right? You look good. You feel good. You feel good. You perform good. But not just because of that, but because they're a brand that stands for something. So if you somebody whose work ethic is driven by leaving something behind for your family, this clothing brand is for you. Yo, you can follow them on Instagram at Lux underscore underscore Legacy or shop with them online at LuxLegacyApparel.com. We're going from hustle to heritage. We live in life fully while we're working with a purpose. So don't just wear a shirt. Wear your ambition, baby. If that's something that you can stand behind, make sure you follow them at Lux. That's L-U-X underscore underscore Legacy or LuxLegacyApparel.com. Also, let them know J Hill sent you. Let's get to this episode. Yo, what's poppin'? You know what time it is. Your boy, Mr. J Hill. J Hill Podcast. We are in the building. A. Mm -mm -mm. This episode is going to be one of the ones, man. You've been following me for some time now. You know that I love having conversations with people from Baltimore. This woman to my left, I mean, oh my gosh, where do I start, man? The embodiment, the 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 epitome of perseverance. Um, I mean, when you talk about coming from the bottom, now we here, but we still going. This is her. I mean, like, when it comes to losing opportunities, not giving up, not quitting on yourself, but always knowing that you had it. You feel me? If you know me, you know what I'm talking about because we done been through it and you guys have seen my journey. But uh, this is somebody that um, really made me enjoy doing my research because I am one of the most confident people that I've known. But, and I'm not really inspired by many because I'm inspired by myself. But she's one of the few people, when I say inspired me, I got emotional during the process of preparing for this interview because her her story is nothing short than amazing. I have Pinky Cole Hayes in the building. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm blessed. I can't. I, I'm I'm excited. I'm excited too. This is going to be interesting. This is going to be one of the <laughs> greatest interviews ever. I'm trying to tell you. Every interview I do is one of the greatest. It is. Yeah. You got a. That's great, the mindset. You you got a great story. Um, but not only that, um, the way you tell it, uh, the just the openness and transparency that you give during the interviews are really great. So thank you. And can I easy. say nobody has ever interviewed me on a podcast from Baltimore? Oh, word. No. So this is yeah. my first time. It's an honor. Yeah. It's an honor. Happy to be here. Uh, thank you. Yo, um, I just want to start off with uh, Pinky Cole, Slutty Vegan. Mm -hmm. When you look back and you think about where you come from, you think about how hard it was coming in from the environments that you came in, Sedonia, I mean, over east, Baltimore, mm -hmm. you feel me? Like, the things you had to endure on the way, getting kicked out of school, going back, people judging you, people telling you mm -hmm. can't, people really not understanding the vision, although you always knew, mm -hmm. and you see yourself right now, if you can reflect on those moments of what you think. 
You know, it's interesting because the cycle always repeats itself every time you enter into a new level. Yeah. People say that you can't. People don't believe. You got to navigate through the most challenging times. I'm really just reliving what happened in my childhood. Mm. The people that didn't believe me then are asking now how I did it. Mm. The people who don't believe me now, they're going to be asking how I did it. You know, I created something that you've never seen before. It is a vegan concept that is helping people to reimagine food in a way that they've never seen it before. And to some, it may be uncomfortable. The name is Slutty Vegan. Mm. Um, So I use the tools that I learned growing up as a kid and having that sense of resiliency no matter what, no matter when people don't believe, no matter when people doubt, no matter when people say it ain't going to work, no matter when people don't want to stand behind it, you still got to go for what it is that you believe in because when your belly leaps, that's the thing that you should do. I don't know if you ever had a big idea. You just cannot stop thinking about it. Mm -hmm. That's really how I live my life. The things that I can't stop thinking about, I continue on no matter what the noise is saying. And as I reflect over my life, I needed to learn those lessons early Mm. because the season that I'm walking into now got a lot more money associated with it. It got a lot more haters associated with it. It got a lot more naysayers associated with it. But because I've experienced this in the past, now I know what to do. Mm. Yeah. Outside of that, though, when you look at... so. When you strip away the audiences, the cameras, uh, the business partners, shit, even your husband, your family, right? When you sitting alone by yourself and you reflect on like how far you came, like what are those conversations that you're having with yourself? What are those thoughts that you're saying? I'm not thinking about that. Wow. I'm going to be honest. Somebody else is going to sit here and say like, oh, I'm just thinking about how far I got. God has been so good to me, but where I'm at is not enough. You understand what I'm saying? So, like, when I'm sitting in my bed at night and it's just me and my pillow, I'm not thinking about the fact, like, oh, yeah, I did all of this and I opened all these. I ain't thinking about that. I'm like, all right, what is next? Mm. How can I be disruptive? How can I change the dynamic of what people think is the norm? How can I elevate it? How can I become a better individual? Those are my thoughts Mm. by myself when everybody else is quiet. And then I'm also thinking about the bills I got to pay. No, (laughs) So it's not never... Because I... No, and I'm not saying that's a good thing. Listen, Mm. the reality of it is, is when you're in, and I don't know if you've ever watched any of my interviews, I'm not going to tell you what people want to hear. I'm telling you the truth because Mm. I'm in it, and I can only speak from my experience. Do I need to do more of just sitting and being present? Absolutely. Mm. But right now, I got so many goals that I want to conquer. So to the naked eye, they feel like I've made it. Mm. I don't feel like I'm nowhere near close. I still got a lot of work to do. So my mind is always running and going now. I just recently took a vacation. Mm. (laughs) And I still was using my phone, but I was trying to take the vacation because I don't rest enough. But the greatest man in the world, right, is if they're not working their hands, they work in their mind. Mm. And I'm not working my hands anymore. I'm working this right here. I'm I'm making this more powerful. I'm making this more sharp. And that's kind of where I'm at in this space in my life right now. Mm. Well, if you re- recognize it or not, man, God is great. And damn, man, what he done to your life yeah. so far right now. God is better than great. Mm. <laughs> yo, so I want to go back. I made a phone, couple phone calls, right? And I said, yo. Who you know that know me? Hey, man, listen. <laughs> I made a couple phone calls. And I'm like, yo, you know some people... Catch you by surprise, but other people was like, oh, "I already knew that, knew that about Pinky." Mm-hmm. Is that her? And it was like, "Bro, yes, she was doing, she was promoting parties before we even knew it was a thing." Yeah, he was like, "Yo, she the type that a go to McDonald's or something, buy food, bring it to school, and sell it." I'm like, yeah. "What?" <laughs> he was like, "Uh, what else he said?" He was like, "Yo, she was doing, she was renting out venues, throwing parties in middle school." I said, "No way." Yeah. No yeah. way. I've been a hustler. What? What? Let's go back to the because I used to do parties too. What got you into the like the party promotion scene and so young? Um, I love independence. And I ain't want nobody doing for me. I ain't want to have to rely on nobody. I ain't want to have to beg or borrow. So I'm like, I'm gonna create my own atmosphere. If I can bring people together in the name of having a good time and put some music behind it, like we're gonna have a ball. And I can remember being 15 and 16 years old calling these rec centers, Thurgood Marshall, yep. North, like calling all of these places, acting like an adult so that I can rent out these spaces and charging $10 a head for the people to get in. I would have a thousand people mm. in my parties. And this was before party promotion got cool in Baltimore. So I was the youngest par- party promoter and I made a lot of money doing it. And it it's almost like a high, mm. right? 
And now I ain't never do no hard drugs. But what I hear about stories is like that high that you get that you want to con- continue to chase that high. So that entrepreneurial high hit me early on. Mm. So I knew that I wanted to continue to bring people together continue to like utilize my resources to make people better. And I did that by way of parties. I used to do hair. (laughs) I used to sell food. I used to sell candy. Like I'm hustle man, whatever it is I got to do, I'm going to do. And I've been like that way before slutty vegan, Mm. before slutty vegan, I was Miss Clark Atlanta university. So I'm the queen of the school. I'm the head Delta. I'm the most popular girl on campus. I'm doing like all the initiatives, before then, I was throwing parties, having all the big parties in the city. People would come to my mother's house in the basement. Everybody knew who I was. So this didn't just start with yeah. the, the burgers, pies, and fries. Like, I've been doing this for a very long time. So this is just a reflection of who I've always been as a kid. Yep. I asked that because, like, when, when he was telling me, he was like, this was like 04, 05 maybe. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wait, what? Because coming up, when I come up, like, we ain't that far in age. Like, not that far. Mm-hmm. When I came up. The people that I like, I was first introduced to was uh, CJ takeover parties. That was high school for me. Mm-hmm. So when I'm like before that, the only thing I could think of is maybe like a pork chop or no, like it was me DJ Blackstar. Yeah, DJ, DJ Blackstar. Amazing. Yep, yep. DJ we used Amazing. to have parties together. So y'all was doing parties together. We were the we were the ones having the parties together. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so they were DJing my parties and I was the face of it. Yo, what? Yeah. Like, but who was like you ain't never see it first to be like I want to do it. This was just right, right? Well, I mean, I grew up, my mother is a local celebrity in the DMV area. She got, she's a lead singer of a reggae band. So growing up, we used to go to her shows and be on stage. Okay. Right? There so like, okay. that was my first sight of people. And, and my mother's a musician. So she used to practice in the basement and all of these famous Caribbean artists would come to the basement and they used to rehearse. And I'm like, oh, this is the life. And okay. then we'd be in public and people recognize my mother and they would adorn her. And I'm like, oh, I want that. Mm. I want to feel that because people love her and she got long hair that touches the ground. So that was kind of like my first taste. Okay. We used to have parties in the basement. And then I'm like, you know what? I want to start having parties and charging people. And when I tell you, I don't know why somebody don't do that now. Like present day having high school parties mm-hmm. where they ain't got to be on the street. They can go to a rec center and have a party with a DJ and it be popping and charge at the door. Like that's big business. Somebody yeah. actually should do that. They probably are. I think I just took my uh, daughter to a party, man. But uh. How old is your daughter going to? Yeah, she's 15. You have a 15 year old? Yeah, it's a bonus daughter, but yeah. Okay. She's fine, so. All right, that still counts. Yeah, but she's talking <laughs> about high school party. I'm like, she's like, but you was doing it when you was in high school. We I said, definitely was doing I it. I was, but that don't mean I'm okay with it. You can yes. do all of that stuff on your own. Mm-hmm. That hope I don't catch you, but I'm not about to drop you off to it. Like, you crazy. Yeah, man. Parents used to drop their kids off all of the time. That's when, that's when life was just easy. Now, I, and, guys, it, you know, we always got, what is it like? The check. We check in or whatever, it checks out. When I ask, because I call uh, CJ, like I said, take over. I'm like, bro, like, you know, Piggy, like, I heard of her, but I ain't really run across her. I'm like, yo, 04, 05, bro, like, no <laughs> way. Like, she was doing parties. He's like, I don't know, you had to ask Blackstar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we check out. Okay. You got it. You got <laughs> we it. Fact checked out. Fact checked out. <laughs> Put a little green check at the bottom <laughs> of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Wait, have you ever have you talked to uh, Amazing since then? Because I think he just got out of jail. Yeah, so I, I, I got him a job. He's working um with at Bar Vegan. Come yeah, on, that's dog. what you do. That's what. That's what you do. That's my brother. Sheesh, that's yeah. so far. That gives me chills because and, that's and, what we do it for. Yeah, and he's doing my grand opening. I'm opening in Baltimore next month. Wow! Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Yo, that's so dope. I'm yeah. like, it, cause I mean that, cause that those are things that I see myself doing. When the time soon as he got out, got him a job. What's up? You still DJing? You going to go back to DJing. Wow. Soon as he got out. So he's been employed since he got out of prison. Working That's for amazing. Me. I wanted to have this conversation with you about um, being a hustler versus uh, being an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. I feel like in Baltimore, like, we aren't privy to all of the fancy words that most people get. Like, we, we just, well, I didn't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe you. Your, yeah. Your, your, your mom was a famous artist. Yeah. I ain't had that. Yeah. So... I really ain't understand the word entrepreneurship until later on down in life. But mm-hmm. one thing I did know was, we from the city. We go get it. Yeah. I didn't know that was entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. When did you learn what you were doing was entrepreneurship itself? I've been an entrepreneur for a very long time since I was a kid. It just wasn't formalized. Yeah, right. That's right? what I'm saying. Right? Like, I have been... It's something about that hustle that feels so sweet. But when did you know that this is entrepreneurship? It's not just hustling. Like, this is entrepreneurship what I'm doing so it's le- le- layers to that conversation right because entrepreneur being an entrepreneur is 
owning a business that belongs to you and you pay taxes, you pay bills and you have an entity. Right. OK. OK. That's being an entrepreneur. You can be an entrepreneur. He can be an anybody can be an entrepreneur. All you got to do is go to the IRS website and you get an entity and now you're an entrepreneur. You have a business. OK. Right. But it goes a little bit deeper than that because not every entrepreneur is a hustler. OK. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you can be an entrepreneur and it look clean and look cookie cutter. But a hustler is being a problem solver. Mm. A hustler is doing what everybody else is afraid to do. A hustler is having sleepless nights, but figuring out a way to find the success in the darkest hour. That is what a hustler is. So when you talk about entrepreneurship, I'm a hustling entrepreneur. Right. Mm. Like, yes. I could, And the paper part is the part that I like the least, to be honest, if you want to be honest. But being able to pivot And problem solve is really where it gets sweet because it teaches you character. Mm. It teaches you resilience. It teaches you how to navigate through the toughest times in entrepreneurship because you and I both know entrepreneurship is ugly. Mm. Mm. It is scary. Sometimes you in that corner, you crying by yourself and nobody even knowing that you step out that corner and you act like everything is good. Mm. That's the name. Am I talking to myself? Mm -mm. Like it's real, but Everybody doesn't go through that. And I'm not saying everybody has to go through that. But what makes that person extra special is they can navigate through it and rise above it. And I knew that for a very long time since I was in high school. Mm. I knew that since I was in high school. They're like, I got to get it no matter what. My dad did 22 years in prison. My mother still works at the same company for the last 38 years. I'm like, this ain't my life. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, I, I love the loyalty that she got to this company and I respect my father for taking his bid with his chin up, but this ain't going to be my life for my children. I want my children to have the best. I don't want them to have to hustle and grind like I did, but I'm going to do the work now so that it can afford them the life um, that they want to live. And that's, that is that true entrepreneurial spirit. And I got that from, from since being a kid. Mm. Where did that come from? I, I asked that because like I said something similar to, to my mom's at 12 years old. I was like, Respectfully, like, I don't know my pops. You ain't really do too much with your life. I'm not going to not do nothing because that would be a waste of a generation. Yeah. I seen when you said respect to my moms. I love that. Like, she was a hustler, mm-hmm. but I didn't want this for myself at a young age. Mm-hmm. Where do you think that came from? Um, Being a kid and, you know, I used to watch TV with my grandmother back in the day, right? And my mother, I was always independent at a young age because my mother had to work. She had multiple jobs to take care of her four kids. So she had to do what was required to make sure that the bills were paid. Mm. So the lights were always on. We always had a hot meal. Thank you, God. Right. But I also realized that it was taking time away from my mother. Mm. And a lot of that trauma even really folds over for me today because I spend a lot of time away from my kids. Mm. Right. Am I, I'm being real. You understand what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, like I'm repeating a cycle, but I'm going to break that cycle because I know that the work that I'm putting in now, right, will give myself an opportunity to be able to spend the time. And I just realized this because before I used to be always on the road, traveling, tra- and now I realize I'm like, damn, I come home and my kids run past me and run to my mother. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So now I'm moving smarter as an entrepreneur, You understand what I'm saying? Because I was always working harder. Mm. And now that I'm moving smarter, I compartmentalize my time. I'm doing my entrepreneurship time, but I'm also giving my children what they need. So that when when all of the billions come, they're not sitting back unhappy and going crazy because mommy was always gone. Mm. I don't know where I took that day, but I felt in my spirit that I need to send it out. So the whole purpose of my show is, is really to humanize uh, the person that so many other people idolize yeah. to see that we are all more similar than different. Yeah. So then they can be motivated to do the same thing that the person they idolize done. Absolutely. Say that to say, I had multiple conversations with multiple famous people about something similar, right? One of them was uh, Zanique, and she was talking about how, like, and it got a lot of bad press because people just be, but the conversation was really like, yo, coming up, I didn't have my parents like mm-hmm. I wanted to. Mm-hmm. Because they was grinding, they had to do what they had to do to change. I would yeah, die. I remember that. Family, I saw that. Right? I talked to Jess Hilarious and she was like, Man, it's times where I would love to be at my, my son's football games, mm-hmm. but I gotta go get it so I can change the dynamic of my family. Mm-hmm. And I hear you say the same thing. And of course, you just learned to be smarter, but like, I wish, I, well, I wonder, I was wondering, like, looking back on it, do you wish you had more grace for your mother 
Not saying that you ain't care because she was working, but maybe you didn't understand what she had to do to change the dynamic of your household. I have all the grace for my mother. Let me tell you something, what I've learned, Mm -hmm. and this is just my personal story. If my mother would have coddled me, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be as independent as I am. Mm -hmm. I got my license, you know, the the earliest age, I think it was like 15 and nine months. That's when I got my permit. Like the the day that I could do it because I had a level of independence. Mm -hmm. My mother was always working. So I became an adult at an early age, but it gave me a level of maturity. If my parents would have coddled me, then the outcome probably would have looked a lot different. That's just for me. I can only speak for myself. So I'm not I'm not here like, oh, my mother worked all the time. No, it actually helped me now that I look back hindsight because it gave me the ability to be on my own and be okay on my own. Mm. So I have a level of independence where my mother is not like, you need to go get a job. You need to go do she ain't had to do that because I wanted it for myself. Mm. And the kids these days are a little bit different now, right? So, like, the the things that they're interested in is a lot different from what we were interested in. I was just worried about getting a car and having a job. Like, they, you know, the young kids want to be influencers, which is a good thing, too, because that's not the, the, the industry that we grew up in. So the times have evolved and the times have changed. But what I'm saying is, for my kids, they're going to see balance. Mm. They're going to see a little bit of both. I'm not going to coddle them. But I'm also going to show them that, like, you ain't got to grind till you kill yourself. Mm. Like, I don't want them giving you your flowers when it's too late, when you're in a casket and they, they singing your u- eulogy because you done grind it so hard and you done hustle so hard. And again, this is a revelation that I'm just getting now as I evolve in this next season of my life. And that's the conversation I wanted to have. I was wondering, was it ever a time where you had resentment towards your mother because you didn't understand? No. No. What, the resentment for my mother, well, not for my mother, for the behavior well, the was the situation. That, that she always wanted to help everybody. But again, this worked out in my favor. My mother, I don't care who it is. If you're Jamaican and you got an accent, she's going to help you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you are my cousin immediately. Like, you moving in the house. She was just that type of person because to the family, she's the one that made it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, all of all of my family live in Jamaica. My mother came here. She was a dancer, um, a professional dancer. So she came here to the States, ended up staying. My father went to prison. So by their standards, she was the one that got away and made it, right? So... She was like left with that quiet responsibility to take care of everybody else. That's just typically how it works in our culture, right? We send barrels. I don't know if you know anything about Caribbean culture, but a barrel is where you send food and pampers and all that stuff. You get it, right? And and you send it back home. And we do that a couple times a year. And we send money for the lights and we help to pay the bills. And then when we come um, to visit the family, we pack in a bag with clothes that we don't wear anymore. Like my mother was always just a person that wanted to give a helping hand. Mm. And when I was a kid... I didn't understand that. But now as an adult, I realized that like my mother really rubbed off on me. Yeah. <laughs> because the core of who I am is really helping people. Oh, we know. If you see like what I do, that ain't for likes or clicks. Yeah. Like I genuinely love to see other people win. It brings me a sense of joy in my heart because I watch my mother do it and I watch how many lives she changed by giving the little that she had. Mm. So if I can use my resources and the information that I have the little that I give can really change somebody else's life. And that's that's also something that I've learned over the years, and I learned it from my mother. Mm. And we see that. Yeah. Like, we see you in real time giving back to your community. Yeah. Does it ever, like, frustrate you when people, excuse my language, but so to say, get you fucked up? Like, they don't know. Like, you have no idea. Like, you got me um, I don't really, you. I don't really have that problem because I've been like this way before Slutty Vegan. When I was in college back in the day, like, if, if you look at my track record and who I am and how I show up in the world, I've been very consistent over the years. Mm-hmm. Very, very consistent. And I don't play about my name and my reputation. You touch it. So, <laughs> I, I, got, I got, like, levels to this interview. But since we already there. But it has been people that got you fucked up. Yeah. Because people try to sue you. Yeah, that's the, that's business. But that ain't get you like you get, like, it did in the beginning, the first one, and then the second one, and then uh, and then after that, what I realize is when you look at the biggest companies in America, they get sued all the time. Just the media ain't talking about it. But because I have such a high profile brand and oh, I'm a yeah. black woman that's successful, that's moving and shaking and doing things that has never been done, it's hot news. It's sexy. Okay. To talk about a, a black woman getting sued. The first time it happened, oh, I was mad. Mm. My attorney was like, don't respond, don't say nothing. I'm like, fuck that. Like, I'm saying how I feel because at the end of the day, when you have nothing else, 
All you got is your name. Come on, man. That is the most important currency that you will ever have. When I take my last breath and they put me six feet under or, or they burn me up and they cremate me, I want to make sure that my name lives beyond me. I want to make sure that my name has a level of currency that will continue to make money for my family. Look at Tupac. Mm -hmm. Look at, um, uh, what's his name? Um, um, Biggie. Biggie. Yeah, I mean, shit. <laughs> Look at Biggie. Listen, their estates are still making money and they've been dead for 20 plus years. Mm. But it's because of the currency of their reputation that they created. So that is the legacy that I'm building. It's, it's not just about our right, pinkies popular, slutty vegan is popular. No, 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 no. When I decide to, to lay it all down, I want my family to be able to appreciate the level of hard work and tenacity and resilience that I put in so that they can reap the layers of that fruit. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, my God. We were just having this conversation yeah. with my producer, Alex, man. So I was just telling him I, I, that, resonates, that resonates with me so much because I, too, like, care about my name. I used to always be like, I'm a man. So all I got my, in this word is my name and my word, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a... It's weird because, like, in today's age, they, they created something called NIL, right? Mm -hmm. Name, image, and likeness. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I like that because an uh, image is something that I look at as, like, if you are of a certain stature. Mm -hmm. But your name is what you have regardless of who you are. What do you think about that? Your name is your image. Mm. Your name is your image. You see this right here? You see the image, but what's the name on the bottle? Mm. So I'll give you an even better example. I can look at Starbucks, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't even have to see the logo, but I know that that's Starbucks. Right. So your name and your image goes hand in hand, right? There is power in a name. Right. And if your name brings power, the image that's connected to the power will speak on behalf of that name. So nice. I think that those things go hand in hand, which is you can't have a good name and a bad image. The math ain't mathing. OK, what about this then? Maybe because I just feel like this this industry that we be in, if you want to say that, but everybody is so like stereotypical. Right. Everybody's so vain. So let's say I see a homeless person. Mm -hmm. Should I treat him? Bad because of the way he looked. So, like, when I hear image, it's like, I don't know if I agree with that because that homeless person could be one of the best people you meet. So, so we're talking about two different layers of image, right? So, like, image is short for imagination. It's what you imagine. Come on. You understand what I'm saying? So, like, you see, you have Pinky, and you imagine Pinky to be this entrepreneur that's getting it, that's hustling, but it's because you hear my name. That makes you imagine a certain thing about me, mm. right? And that image is up to your image of me may be different from my image of you, but those things go hand in hand. Now, who's perceiving it is different. You follow what I'm saying? Mm. Who's perceiving that image is different, but the image and the name goes hand in hand. I don't play about my image because I don't play about my name. Mm. My name is when when you hear my name, I want you to think about like how people think about Oprah. Mm -hmm. Like, there's some regality to that. You know what I'm saying? There's some specialness about that. There is, like, this is roy this is crown royalty. And now my image has to reflect that because if, if if this has regality and royalty and then you start looking at the image and you're like, well, this ain't matching up. Something don't match. There's a disconnect. Mm. So it's so important as you continue to build your brand, your image and your name has to go hand in hand. Mm. And that is how successful brands and businesses are made. Man, that's fire. You know, it, does that ever... Because, it's it, it, again, it's nuanced to this conversation. Does it ever affect the personal life? And I ask that because, like, I am who I am regardless mm -hmm. of a podcast, a camera, whatever. I am who I am. And because I care about my name so much, mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'm willing to go the extra mile to clear things up. Mm -hmm. Same. Some people will look at that as people pleasing. I look at it as, nah. Like, people say, I don't care what nobody think about me. I don't agree with that because... Mm -hmm. I'm a good person. Mm -hmm. So naturally, I want you to, I would hope you think the same thing. So if I rubbed you the wrong way, I don't want to apologize and let's clear it up. Mm -hmm. But again, some people look at that as like, oh, you said people pleaser. Mm -hmm. Did you ever run into that? All the time. Mm. I am a people pleaser. So you would say you are? Yes. I'm in a hospitality business. I please people. How you think the bills get paid? I got to please the people. You think Slutty Vegan would have lines down the block if I didn't please the people? I got to please them. And the minute I stop pleasing people, 
I lose the lines. I lose the people. How do you manage that in personal, though? Because that's still business. So let's talk about business for a second. People pleasing is what hospitality is, mm-hmm. right? Like, people pleasing is more than just food. And a lot of people may disagree with this, but that really has been my secret formula. Like, give people a white glove experience is people pleasing. You're making sure that they are pleased with what you are giving them. That's very important. And my personal life, um, I don't, personal life, I don't have to. I don't have those issues because how I show up. Remember, these are people that know me, so they respect me. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't have to please these people. They already know we have a boundary. We have a dynamic here. So I don't have to go above and beyond to please them because there's already a mutual respect in the relationship. When you people please in here in the hospitality business, these people don't know you. So you got to create a relationship here. And a part of creating that relationship is making them believe in who you are and what you're offering. And that's when they fall in love with the brand and continue to support it. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So like in my personal life, they already know me. They, they they already know how I operate and how I operate in this way is how I operate in that way. There's people, the people that I have around me now, and it ain't always been like that. Okay. This- the, the people that I have around me now. They don't play with me. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Respectfully. Like, they they honor me. They respect my boundaries. They want they want to see me win. They want the best for me. So I, I don't, like, we already have the relationship there. So there's nothing for me to, like, I don't have to please you because we have a mutual understanding, mm-hmm. right? They, they, they help me out. I help them out. Um, we create this healthy narrative around each other, and we can win together. But these people don't know me. Mm-hmm. So I got to please these people so that they can continue to come back to support my brand and support my business. And I want them to genuinely love my business. I don't want it to feel transactional. They got to genuinely love my business because if they don't, I didn't do it right. Mm. See, I'm talking to the pinky that was on a rise, not the pinky right now. So I get that, right? I'm so, I, I guess, um, for example, in your book, I uh, Hope You Fail, mm-hmm. Chapter Five, I hope you, I hope you break your heart. Some, I hope mm-hmm. we cheat on you, something mm-hmm. like that, right? You talk about relationships and you talk about how, um, a relationship is important mm-hmm. and being the person you're with. So when I'm thinking about people pleasing, really knowing when to walk away and knowing when it's okay to be the villain. There's levels to people pleasing. Like, are you talking about people pleasing when people are asking you for money? Yes. <laughs> like I I used to deal with so much guilt in the beginning because it's called um Survivor's su- remorse. Survivor's success remorse. Survivor's mm. remorse, mm. right? So you're the only one around you that's successful and you got to say yes to the people that's asking you for money or asking you for help because if you don't, you're a bad person and how dare you not help that? I used to people please in that way. Absolutely. Oh, people used to get me good. Mm. They used to get me real good. But then I realized that I am helping you, but I'm killing myself. Mm. And I can't do that no more. So I stopped that, right? Um, there, There have been times where... In relationships, I wanted to make people happy, but I was killing myself, and I had to stop doing that. All of these things, there is evolution. Let me tell you something about evolution. When I came in here, I said the season I'm in. Um, I'm in a season where it's a season of surrender, Mm. right? And that season of surrender is surrender, surrendering all bad relationships, surrendering all the things that no longer serve me, surrendering the things that's not going to allow me to grow and it's going to hold me back. So that season of surrender comes with setting true boundaries on who I am. There's also something called people pleasing when you look at blogs and people write in the comments like you don't have to comment on every single thing that somebody said. That's not up to you to do that. That's their perception and let them think what their perception is. That don't have nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. But it's layers to people pleasing. So like it's not blanket all across the board, but what I have learned is that my level of people pleasing has diluted as I evolved in business. As I've had moments where I could have damn near lost it all and I didn't have a lot of people standing by my side. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So the narrative has changed for me. Mm. So if you would have asked me this question five years ago, it probably would have been different. You know why? Because I've evolved. Mm. And if you're not evolving, then you ain't doing something right. Right. Yeah. Do you remember the breakthrough moment, though? That, that come to life moment? Like... Oh, I can't do this no more. When I almost went broke. Mm. <laughs> Helping other people almost going broke. <laughs> like, and, and I'm talking about the first time when I had a, 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 a Jamaican restaurant in Harlem. Mm. That's the one that caught on fire? That's the one that caught on fire. Like, I realized that at the end of the day, nobody cares. Mm. And as long as you are okay with knowing that nobody cares, life will get a lot better for you. And that kind of was like a breakthrough moment for me because now I don't have high expectations for people. How they show up 
It's how they show up. It's how they show up and how I respond to how they show up makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, isn't it crazy how you look at somebody like so successful at yourself, as yourself, as anybody, because we all go through this, as confident as you are, as you was, it's like how much how much we lack confidence when it comes to ourself. When it came to your dreams, when it came to your business, nobody couldn't tell you nothing. Mm -hmm. Nobody, if I was to ask you, did you see yourself here 20 years ago, you'd probably be like, yeah, I always seen it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the things you let slide in platonic friendships, mm -hmm. emotional relationships, the things you let slide when it came to you. Mm -hmm. It's you crazy, are, right? Ain't that crazy. It is crazy. But I think that it comes, you got to go through life. Mm. Right. Like it's one thing to be an entrepreneur and you like stuck on this thing because you see that thing and nobody can affect that thing because you believe in it so much. Right. But as humans, we're emotional creatures. We got feelings. We we have vulnerable moments like you're, you're not allowed to be vulnerable in business. That's what they say. Mm -hmm. Right. So like you have this in your mindset that I got to be tough in business. I got to be this. I got to be. This. But in your personal life, we're so vulnerable. This is the space where we could just let our hair down. But then when you let your hair down, you got people around you that ain't good for you. You got people around you that's sucking you dry. So now it affects you in that way. Mm -hmm. And it also can start to show up in the business. So. As I evolve and as I get better in business, because this is a, I'm a work in progress, I realize that in order for my business to maintain a success, my personal life has to be a reflection of excellence in my spiritual, mental and emotional well-being. Mm. And that's a non-negotiable. Before I used to let, OK, whatever. But like if my personal life is all over the place, so is my business. If my personal life is just in disarray and I'm not happy, guess what? You're going to feel it in the business. Mm. And those things really have to go hand in hand because if it does not, one is going to suffer. Mm. Stay on our personal. I talked to somebody. I don't want to get in my trouble. I talked to somebody recently and they was like, they work with like some bigger profile people. Right. And now they're working with you, working with you for a short amount of time. I said, yo, what's the similarities? Mm. And it was like, you know, I don't know, but I can tell you the difference. I'm like, what? It was like, these people, like, they care more about the logistics. You know what I'm saying? They work. Mm -hmm. But, like, she she really cares about the people, the person. Mm -hmm. I'm like, damn. <laughs> I'm like, wait. Like, yeah, like, if 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 something is off, a penny off the check, we got to get it right. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, that got to be exhausting, though, because in business, like you said, sometimes business don't like you. Sometimes business don't care how you feel, no. but through it all, through all the success in the business, you still are able to be a person first still. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because the biggest thing that would destroy your relationship is money. Mm. And I got this model. I do not play with people money because guess what? Somebody money get messed up. I'm going to give you a story. I was watching the Golden Globe Awards. And after the awards, it was headline news. Pinky Cole, slutty vegan, getting sued for unpaid wages. And I'm like, this is my first time hearing it. I'm like, what is going on? They say nobody else. Named. I didn't even know. I wasn't running a company day to day. I didn't even know what was going on. But my name was all over it. Mm. So if you know me in my personal life, you know that one thing I don't play about is money. I, I just feel like money destroys relationships. Having a conversation about money, owing people like I don't I don't like that feeling. So it's hard even when I owe money in business. Right. So when when somebody's check is missed or somebody something happens in business because things happen. Right. Like I'm on it like 911, because at the end of the day, you don't know what that person is going through. Number one, they need their money because they work for it. Number two. And number three, my name is on it. Mm. And I don't want to be on no headline news. For the wrong reason. If you want to put me on the headline news, put me on the news because I'm opening new locations. Mm. Put me on the news because I got a $100 million brand. But don't put me on the news because I owe somebody some money. That mm. doesn't feel good. And that is probably the biggest shot to your reputation. If you want to know a sure way to kill your brand, to kill your name, it's by way of money. Mm. And I paying people money. And I care a lot about that. And that part gives me anxiety sometimes because sometimes people don't always get it right. Um, but I care about making sure that the people who work for and with me get their money. It's important. Pinky, I have so many questions. I don't know what I see. Yes, X. Um, I'm gonna go random for a couple of seconds if you if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you said you had to let go somebody like higher in management. And um, not more so about letting go, but what they said to you was interesting. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. It was like if I was a millionaire, if I had to manage this uh, multi-million dollar company, mm-hmm. I would have never let my hand go. Yeah, let my hand off of it. Yeah. Where are you at now? Are you back? Hands oh, on? I'm back. <laughs> I'm back in it every day. Mm. I am back in my business every day, and this is probably the hardest season that I've ever had in business. Mm. Um. Because I don't know if you know, but I had three kids back mm-hmm. to back. So I had a baby in 21, a baby in 22, and a baby in 23. Then I got married. Okay. And then I'm opening all these stores. Congratulations, too. Thank you. So I stepped outside of the day to day of the business. So I was I was doing the interviews, doing all these things, like high level conversations had. Being a face. I was being the face of the brand, which most founders do, right? But what happened was is there were obviously people in position. So I stepped away from the business and the day-to-day decision-making of the business I did not make, mm. right? So I came back fully in my company in January. So I'm coming back to decisions that somebody else made. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So like systems, procedures, software, all of the things is new. I'm like a new hire in my own business. So I've been having to navigate through being a new hire in the company that I created, Right. Mm -hmm. Then I also have to navigate to these new employees that I don't know. I don't know these people. So I'm coming back. They got to get to know me. I got to get to know them. The culture is different because I my energy ain't been in it. I'm being honest with you. Right. So now that I'm back in the business, it's like I feel like I'm getting hazed all over again. But it's a good haze Mm -hmm. because no better feeling in the world than to know that, like, I'm back in my business. Like, I feel like 2018, like, that hunger is back. Now it's hard. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to lie to you because running a company from 2018 to 2020 when we only had three stores versus all the stores that I have now and, you know, all the notoriety is different. So I can't just make a decision, okay, I feel like doing this, and then we blah, blah, blah. I can't do that no more. Mm -hmm. I got to go through a board. (laughs) <laughs> like there has to be decision making there's protocol it's no longer just pinky's decision and then to be honest sometimes that takes the fun out of it mm. you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so when the person said that to me if i were you i would have never taken my hand off the wheel this it probably was the most expensive lesson mm. that i've ever had to learn in my life and the reason why I was expensive is because nobody tell. I'm thinking I'm doing the right thing as a founder. Put put somebody in position who was qualified to do it. Right. Put somebody in position um, to be able to run a company so I can go off and do other things. But you still got to keep your eyes on it because nobody is going to love your baby like you love your baby. No matter what. Nobody. Nobody is going to treat it like yours. Even if they try hard, it's still yours. It's almost like a baby that come out of your womb. You're going to treat it differently. Even if somebody love it today, blue in the face, it's yours. And because it's yours, there's a certain level of affinity that you're going to have for that thing. And you just got to be mindful of when you make that exit out of that business and who you position in that business to be able to do what is required to keep it successful. Yo, I'm trying so hard to keep this on you, but I can relate so much. Yeah. And like, like I don't even want to talk about myself, but it's just... Tell me, I'm here. It's like... I see you as, like, you really inspire me, right? Like, and it's just crazy because I just, I don't need inspiration. I'm just being real. Like, nothing. I just, I don't need it. I don't need motivation. I wake up, look in the mirror. That's enough motivation. Mm -hmm. But you're like, I'm like, bro, damn, she did that too, that too, that too? Mm -hmm. Man, I'm I'm telling y'all. I've been telling y'all. But anyway, Mm -hmm. I say to say, what you just explained is kind of like, for me, it's like that person looking on the other side thinking the grass is greener, right? Mm -hmm. Because... I'm tired of being a hustler. Like you said, like, I don't want to work hard. Like, people be like, yo, Jay, man, he's one of the hardest working mm-hmm. people. I don't want that compliment no more. Keep yeah, it. Yeah, yes. I, <laughs> I don't want it. Like, no, I want to work burnout. smart. burnout. Yes. yes. But it's hard to work smart when you ain't got, whatever, whatever. So I say that to say, in my mind, I'm like, man, one of my goals is to be able to take my foot up, my hands off the business. And I'm listening to one of the most successful entrepreneurs that I've been able to talk to. And you're like, man, when he told me that, Oh, it was a wake-up call. And I'm like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. I'm looking for the day I can take my hands off. Mm-hmm. And you're like, that was one of the biggest mistakes I made. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and I think that it's still a good idea to do it. I, I probably just did it too early. Okay. It's a difference. You know what I'm saying? It's all about timing. Okay. Everything, the success of your business is about timing. Your notoriety, your influence is about time. God first mm-hmm. and timing. Okay. Right? So if I could turn back the hands of time, I probably would have still done it, but the timing would have been different. I would have put proper protocols and procedures in place. Um, I would have put more people in position, and I would have still stayed involved by 
being involved on certain calls, making sure that I'm active in certain areas. I'm not saying that you got to be in it a thousand percent, but I needed this to learn because Slutty Vegan is not my first and last business. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Like there's going to be 10 other businesses that I'm going to create, but Slutty Vegan was the Harvard of the entrepreneurship journey that I'm on. Mm -hmm. Right. And in that curriculum, I learned about, Equity. I didn't even know about equity when I started studying being equity and safe notes and making sure that your paperwork is right and getting proper attorneys and your trademarks and making sure that you have proper board calls and recording them. Like all of the things that I learned in this business is going to make me a billionaire mm. in the next. Mm. So study vegan was the vessel that opens up the door to do those things. But I needed to learn it here. I needed to go to this. I've been in school for six years. Mm. I'm metaphorically speaking, but I needed to go through those things because now I can teach other people because I'm from Baltimore. Like you, they didn't teach me this. Mm. I literally had to learn by falling on my face every single time. Nobody teaches you about money. I raised $25 million. Nobody teaches you about money, making sure that you get financial advice. Nobody teaches you that I'm doing all of this on my own, but guess what? The next couple of businesses that I create, multi-billion dollar businesses because I got the expertise in, in Slutty Vegan and I wouldn't change that for the world. I'm so grateful for it. I'm so grateful at something that I created that is going to make history, that has already made history. And just to be at the driver's seat on every single level of the business has just been such a beautiful feeling. And one day this story is going to be told in the history book. Mm. Yo, God is so good, man. I'm listening to you and I'm just like in awe because... I literally just made a post on Instagram saying, like, some compliments just make me tick a little bit. It's still good, mm -hmm. but, like, people always be like, yo, Jay, like, you need to do a mentorship. Like, you really know this podcast stuff. You really know mm -hmm. equipment and equipment. And, and like, oh, somebody asked me some help, and I'll send it to them. And you're like, bro, you really like a dictionary when it comes to this. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I'm like, man, I wish y'all prayed me for the hard work it took to get here. Yeah. I say that because, like, all of this stuff come from experience. They ain't teach me. I had to literally... Lose out on interviews, big interviews that I thought at one time because I forgot to get two different uh, videos or two different. Mm -hmm. It was things I learned. All of this, you see where I am mm -hmm. now because of the failure that I had yes. to go through. Yes. It wasn't school. You know how much money I didn't spent mm -hmm. and wasted, and I ain't gonna say wasted. Uh, looking back on it, but how much money I spent that I need to spend just mm -hmm. to learn about the right equipment. Yeah, and I'm like, man, y'all have no idea. So yeah. when you said it, it's like phew, hit yeah. a nerve. But I, I I wouldn't trade it for the world. For the world. And some days are harder than others. I'm not even going to lie. Because mm -hmm. you got to imagine, I'm a public figure now. So I'm a public figure back in my business, running it day to day. So my employees don't know if they want to autograph or if they scared to talk. Like, you know, it's, it's different. But I'm navigating it. You know mm. what I'm saying? And I... Heavy is the head. Come on. You understand what so I'm saying? So much is given. <laughs> like... Man, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. And I know that I'm going to continue to be the voice of entrepreneurship, transparent entrepreneurship, because people be out here lying. So, <laughs> all right. I got a question, but hold up, hold up. Transparent entrepreneurship. One thing that stands out, even as doing my research, right? You are a social, uh, what we call influencer, mm -hmm. kind of, right? But, but you even said this. On your Instagram, we don't get transparency. We get like the wins. You've said this. You, you show the wins. Mm -hmm. Off camera, I don't know if you if we could, we could block it out if you don't. You said you wanted you about to start a new endeavor, mm -hmm. and I'm curious to know: Are you going to give people more transparent, Pinky? I feel like I get a transparency now. If you watch my latest videos, yeah, yeah, I've but, been super transparent. True. Um, which is which is a part of the reason why I want to do um the podcast. Okay. So that's my new endeavor. Okay. Um, and that podcast is not like a regular podcast where like question and answer. Like I really want to talk to ordinary people who are doing extraordinary things, who mm. want to do extraordinary things. Come on. So like no name folks. Like I'm not looking to interview celebrities. That's not really like I may sprinkle them in, but that's not the core of the show. Mm -hmm. It's really like prophesizing into people business mm. um, on ideas on what they should create. I'm really good at that. Like, that's the part that, like, gives me energy. Um, that's the producer in you. Yeah. Like, I, I want to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, and, and that level of transparency will be shown through that podcast. I'm excited to see that. Yeah. Let's get back to the interview. I know that was a yeah. segment. <laughs> so, it was, um, speaking of this confidence, right? Uh, and you are, I don't want to say new, but you just got into this, your, your walk with God, like, past yes. couple years. I just, I'm just being. Past couple weeks. All right, yeah. I was just saying it because I didn't know how far. So, yeah. okay. Past couple weeks. I don't know if you knew this, but you was walking 
like God was walking with you the whole time, mm-hmm. right? Um, and the first thing that came to mind because it's something that I think about. Steve Harvey actually talked about this, but it's uh, it is is Alex here? Oh, he went upstairs. Um, it's Hebrews one eleven. One second. I'm. A, oh, here we go. Hebrews eleven and one. It says, "Now faith is confidence in what we hope for, and assurance about what we cannot see." Mm. Steve Harvey talked about this being a preview, mm-hmm. like the preview of the reality. Mm-hmm. And he made an analogy about uh, before every movie come out, you got to see the preview. Yes. Right? But sometimes you might have a dream and you see the preview before everybody else mm-hmm. and they think you're crazy. Mm-hmm. Instantly, when I'm doing the research, I'm like, oh, wow, because you felt the same way. But you just started your walk with God, mm-hmm. right? When you look back on it and, and you... You knew all along, like, I've been telling y'all mm-hmm. I was going to be here. Mm-hmm. Y'all ain't see it, but I've been telling y'all. Mm-hmm. What do you think about? You know, it's interesting. God always been walking with me. I just started walking with God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. He always been walking with me. I literally just started moving my feet and walking alongside him, mm. right? And that's deep. I don't know if that went over your head. Um, he was carrying you. He was carrying me. You ever seen the, um, I'm going to let you, the, the footprints in the sand? Yes. Yes. Okay. He was carrying me. And now that I'm walking with him, I, I understand that scripture in a different way. Mm. Because the preview is not always pretty. Mm. The preview is going to come with some bumps. It's going to come with some 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 grooves and some, some shifted patterns. The preview is going to look uncomfortable. Sometimes the preview may look like broke. The preview may look like a bad relationship. The preview may look like um, losing friendships. The preview may look like a failed business. But guess what that is doing? It is setting you up for something so beautiful. But God is just making sure that you're ready for all of the things that you endure in the preview so that you can be a testimony to other people Mm. and that you can endure and face the challenge if it comes again because God already showed you what it's going to look like and how to deal with it. Mm. And I am in the preview phase of my life. Mm. Right. That there is a certain level of commercial that is happening before the main event. And my main event is going to unfold itself in 2025. I was just talking on live. I was saying how 2024 was my yin year. Right. Mm -hmm. And 25 is my yang year. If you know anything about yin and yang. So like darkness, light. Mm -hmm. And that can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. Right. So. There's the balance that happens there because you need some of the darkness in order to be able to achieve some of the light. Um, So that preview has been happening and preview for me looks like changing of talent in my business. Right. Navigating where is Slutty Vegan going in the next five years? Am I going to franchise? Am I going to license? What, what, is there a space for veganism in the market when all of these vegan companies are dying and Slutty Vegan is just still here? Like that is the preview. But the preview is so beautiful because what it does is it's preparing you when you don't even know that you're being prepared. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And then when you really unlock it after the preview, it's going to be so beautiful. So I'm excited about the preview in this season. And that movie, oh, I'm going to run my movie. No, for, and, <laughs> and the preview also, because you've seen it, it gives you that confidence. Like, Absolutely. Uh, I think Pastor uh, Jamal Bryant was talking to you about uh, just having the confidence to be yourself yes. in a room full of billionaires, right? And you yes. said something that I was like, that's me. I'm sorry to keep saying it, but I swear <laughs> to God, bro, I'm looking at it. I'm like, no, that's, so you was like, no, nah, I don't. He was like, I don't really, uh, cause I am a billionaire. Yeah. You just ain't see it yet. Well, I, it, yeah. it ain't in my bank account yet. Yeah. And I'm like, no, real talk, Twitter. I'm sorry. Before yeah. I came to Bros, right? They asked me like, what makes you want to be a Q? Real talk. Oh, you know I'm a Delta. We yeah, didn't even. Right, okay, right, we should have started there. But <laughs> listen, man, listen. I told you it's mad stuff and coming. So I'm like, real talk. They thought it was arrogant, but I'm like, yo, I feel like everything y'all believe in. I did. I, I looked up the Carter Press, all that. I've been believed in that. So I feel like low key, I am already a Q. I just gotta show y'all, go through yeah. the process. Yeah. So when you said that, I'm like, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. There's nobody above me but God. Mm mm mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're a celebrity, if you got a billion dollars. I don't care. I don't care who you are, what your title say, what it is. I see you here. Were you Mrs. Clark, Miss Clark Atlanta, uh, before you was the Reds or after? After. All right. Let me ask you this, because okay. I was Mr. Copman State University. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I got kicked out of Morgan, went to Copman, I became Mr. Copman. That's crazy, I, ironic as it is. Mm-hmm. Um, One thing I had to learn was... Showing up in the moment for who I am. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be so transparent that I could show people that, yo, you can be a Q and Mr. Coppin. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn that 
you are a Q. Mm -hmm. You don't have to show up being a Q because Cotman State University is more than Omega. Mm -hmm. So I'll come in like hop and stuff like that. They're like, you got to show up at least yeah, a mm -hmm. They will know you are a Q. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to show people like a neck roll out, right? Mm -hmm. And I learned that in life though, because even if you don't have a job, whatever, who you are in your personal life may not be what your business represent. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you could be like we entrepreneurs. We we got the lean seat to do it, but sometimes that don't. You gotta show. Well, you know, for me, who I am in my personal life is actually the business. So in in real life, I'm loud, I'm raunchy, okay. I'm like yeah. I'm Slutty myself. <laughs> yeah. So when you go into business and they calling you a slut, that's really my personality. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Like my my level of customer service and just wanting to do right by people and just having that genuineness like shows up in my business. Mm. So I understand your point though, but but basically what you're saying is like for me. I was a Delta first, and then I became... I was Miss Omega Sci-Fi, so I was... A word. Miss Omega Sci-Fi, then a Delta, then I became Miss Junior, then I became Miss Clark Atlanta University. Okay. So I, I've done all the things. Yeah, you've been so I know like you said, you I've really, been that girl, you've right? You've been that, you right? <laughs> so what I learned is, it was from me being myself. From me being myself, those are the things that are the cherry on top. That made, so basically, I make Miss Clark Atlanta University look better. I made being a Delta look better because of who I am and how I showed up in the world. And as a result of that, the people that came behind me, everybody wanted to be Miss CAU mm. because I was being myself. And because I had that title on me, people connected myself with the title and they like, oh shit, I want that too. But it was really how I showed up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's like, fire. But yeah, like... This was this is, this is going to be a segment or a game, I don't know. This is supposed to be the... Uh, the um. The icebreaker, but we yes. need an icebreaker. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say a statement, a word, or whatever. And I want your um, first thing to come to mind. Okay. All right. Uh, so Baltimore. Crabs. <laughs> That's it. Crabs? That's the only thing? Okay, whatever. whatever. Um, and if you want to go into it, you can elaborate. Okay. Humility. Me. What about it, though? Um, I think one of the reasons that I've gotten so far in life is because the higher I elevate, the more humble I get. Mm. And that is that is an art to do that. Most times people elevate in their business and their careers and then they get cocky and then you lose the people. Mm, mm, mm. You understand what I'm saying? But like the the more I elevate, the more I bring people with me. And there's a level of humility that will keep you connected to the people when you continue to remain who you are and bring the people with you. Mm. We got to, not yet, we got to get into your husband because y'all have a lovely relationship and you mm -hmm. talk so much, like, life on, over it. And even in a book, sometimes you love him so much. But even in relationships, right, platonic or intimate, humility is so big because you are able to step aside and allow someone else to exist in the moment where sometimes people always want to be the life of the party, always want to be the face of the room. Like, nah, bro, I can allow... I know that your light doesn't dim mine. And that's okay. Humi humility is meeting people where they are. That mm. is, to me, is humility. Mm. Humility is simply meeting people where they are. Mm. And as long as you continue, as you elevate, you continue to meet people where they are, that is a beautiful humility. Mm. Yeah. And it's crazy. So, like, now we hear people say, I hate that word humble. Because people try to try to uh, villainize it. Yeah. But, like, no. It just... It still can be in a yeah, good word. Humble, humble means a, a lot of things. Mm. Being like, I'm an energy person, so I feel energy. Like, the, humble ain't just a word. Humble is an energy. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you ever been around people and they just, it's like the loudest person in the room be like the weakest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like, I know people that are so powerful and they ain't even got to do much. Mm. Okay. Like, I, I'm here doing this interview with tights and a t-shirt on. I ain't got to do much because guess what the outfit is? Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like levels to humility. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's fire. Okay. Um, This is more so of a statement. Uh, having a problem, knowing the solution, or having a drive to fix that. Scared money don't make no money. Hmm. <laughs> scared money don't make no money the only way that you and I'm not talking about money the currency I'm talking about the opportunity if you are too afraid to make a move you ain't never gonna get there mm. you gotta make the move my favorite line is you better lose yourself in the mu music the moment you own it you better never let it go you only get one shot do not miss your chance to blow because opportunity comes once in a lifetime and if you miss that opportunity mm. you're gonna be sitting there looking at somebody else Saying, damn, that was me, and I let it fly. So you cannot be, and you you gonna you gonna be scared. 
right? That's a natural feeling to be scared sometimes, right? And anybody say, I ain't scared of nothing is a lie because some, there's some things that just get us excited, mm-hmm. right? But you got to be able to move on to things that you genuinely in your heart believe in more than anybody else because that is the thing that's going to be that one opportunity that's going to take you there. Mm, they say success is when preparation meets opportunity. Yes. You talked about the drive in it. What was more interesting to me is the fact that you knew that before starting the business that you had a solution to a problem yes. and the drive to do it. Yes. When did you know that you needed a solution to a problem? I didn't know it. It just happened. And I think that that was the alignment. It's an unknown alignment. I don't know if you ever heard of that. But an unknown alignment is like you just walk in in a space that is destined for you. Mm. I wasn't sitting there like, okay, so this is what I'm going to do first. I'm going to create this business and I'm going to tell all these people that vegan helps you. It wasn't that. I was just solving a personal problem. I wanted some vegan comfort food on a late night. You understand what I'm saying? And as a result of that, it evolved into a universal solution from a problem that a lot of people deal with. Mm. And that unknown alignment, money can't pay for that. Mm. That's a fact. But then it also it goes into the, not to get too spiritual in here, but like it goes into, it shows you where you wasn't aligned. Not saying that. Of course. You had to. When I had a Jamaican restaurant, I was selling oxtails. <laughs> Guess what I was <laughs> And <going. laughs> I was saying, eat this jerk chicken, but I didn't eat it. I wasn't in alignment, which is why I didn't work. Listen, God literally had to put fire in front of me to take that business away because I wasn't in alignment. That fire it. means a lot. It's symbolic to a whole lot of things. He had to destroy it. Listen, you know, I just started reading the Bible, right? Mm-hmm. So in the Bible, um, what I learned is every time God don't like something that he build, he destroys it. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Like he destroys it. Noah, he, 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 he destroyed that first land. And he told Noah, pack all these people up and put them in a the boat. And he go and he destroyed, he, mm. he destroyed that land and brought these people. Then there was another time he destroyed another land. Cause it was like some sodomy and some crazy stuff going on. He destroyed it. So God literally had to destroy what he created. Cause he didn't like how it was looking. Mm. So now that I look back over my life, I'm like, thank you, God. Thank you for destroying. Because if you didn't destroy it, I would have still been in the same relationship. I would have still been in that same store. I wouldn't have elevated. I would have been stuck in that place. You understand what I say? I'd have been miserable. I wouldn't have been able to achieve my wildest desire that a slutty vegan. He needed to destroy that land so that I can create something new. Mm. Like it gets deep. And I'm and I'm still learning. Now you got that fire insurance. And now and now I got the fire insurance. <laughs> and God still can destroy it if He want to, because right now it ain't up to me no more. Mm. I've surrendered. Remember, it's up to God. And how I move every day is if this is what God wants, I'm gonna move with it. Mm. When I face challenges in my business and it's some BS that's happening on my team, and I'm just like, you know what, God, you got this. And I'm gonna just follow your lead. I'm gonna walk with you. You've been walking with me. Now I'm walking with you. Tell me where we going. Mm. You the GPS. Mm. <laughs> mm. Okay. Uh pivoting. Oh, that's my first name. Pivoting. You know, I pivot every day. I promise you, I'm like a magician. Mm. One day I'm gonna tell this story so cold. I am like a magician. I pivot every single day. And I think that that is what makes a magical entrepreneur because you gotta know the art of the pivot. You gotta block out the noise and know that the pivot is going to move you into a different direction that is going to put you in a better position. Mm. Right. And everybody don't know how to pivot. People wanna play it safe and they just wanna wait for the opportunity to come to them, but I can't sit and wait for no opportunity. I gotta keep it moving. Mm. And and pivoting, that's new ideas. For example, my restaurant, new menu items, right? Like um, growing and scaling in different areas and doing something that's not working. If I got something on the menu that ain't selling like I wanted to sell, okay, get it off the menu. Do something different. Mm. But pivoting is literally the PhD to being an entrepreneur. And once you master knowing how to pivot, you will always be successful. Look at the biggest brands in the world. There's a brand called um, Boppy, Boppy. It, the, the brand used to be called, um, and I might get this wrong, used to be called um, Mothers. You can look it up, Alex? Yeah, it used to be called like um, Mothers or something. And it was and it was branded obviously just for mothers. But then they changed it to like Poppy or something like that. And the branding, the colors, everything looked different. They had to make a pivot because they realized that we are just selling to mothers and maybe mothers just think that this is the drink for them. Now we're going to make this for everybody. So even the biggest brands in the world know the art of the pivot. And if you know the art of the pivot and if you can identify and understand it, you'll be a lot better off. Yeah, it's fire. You found it? No, it's the drink. Mother, It's called um, Mothers, and then they change it to, like, Boppy. Okay. 
Um, next one word, uh, gatekeeping. I don't do it. Mm. <laughs> you know why? Because it's enough out here for everybody. Let me tell you what I learned about being a dot connector, because mm. that's what I am. A part of the reason why I've been able to build so many great relationships with like celebrities and people in power and people at big businesses is because every time I encounter them, it's me offering them something instead of me asking for something. So I may see like a good connection, like, hey, so-and-so, I know this guy named Jay. He got something going on. Like, y'all really needed to connect. Y'all are two people that I admire. Y'all need to do business together. Connection made. Mm. And what you're doing now is planting a seed that you'll be able to use later, Mm. right? Because some relationships ain't always the right now relationship. That's the problem. People think that you, when you're networking, you're supposed to get something from them right now. Right now is give me what I need and I need to ask you for this. And that's why people run. But if you can create a space where you add value to the people around you, there's always going to be a rainy day when I'm going to need you. Mm. And it's not like I help you so you got to help me. But there's an unknown silence where it's like I'm going to scratch your back, you scratch mine. Mm. And when people feel like, you come around them and you ain't asking for nothing, but instead you're helping them, then it makes them want to help you more. Mm. That's that's another one of my like secret formulas. Like anybody that I get around, I want to help. I genuinely want to help and I want to see you win. So I know that I got a Rolodex of people that if I pick up the phone, they're going to do whatever for me because I ain't charged no money to make the connection. I ain't, I don't want nothing in return, but maybe I may need you three years down the line and you're going to look out for me because we built that genuine connection. And even just somebody being able to say that, helps you right like yeah. i'm not gonna lie uh, I, I i feel the same way it's crazy and i remember like uh just starting her podcast but i've been telling her to start a podcast like mm-hmm. been telling her and i'm like bro start a podcast you got to you got to mm-hmm. make a long story short moving to atlanta i gave her my team mm-hmm. right like no charge not just like yo help her and we was having a conversation on the podcast when i interviewed her and of course she's way bigger now mm-hmm. and she said it mm-hmm. and it meant the world because it's like She's just, like back then, and she's always was just, but mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. I always seen it, yeah. even when the world didn't see it. So the fact that we're having a conversation when the world sees it, and she's mm-hmm. like, Yo, I remember between you and Charlemagne, and like, I'm like, That's great company to be mm-hmm. in. So even that, even if it's no that, you never know what, where that can go. People will speak your name in rooms that you will never even walk in, mm-hmm. and that is the currency that you need. <laughs> what? Come on, yeah. Yeah. and I, I said, Gave him because I feel like. You experience people trying to gatekeep you as well, though. Mm-hmm. I, th- I thought that, but um, that's the next one is. Sorry, I found the name. It was called uh, Mother. Originally, they changed it to Poppy. Yeah. Okay. So P O okay. P I. I mean P O P P I. Thank you. Yes. Um, shout out to my guy Alex. This is my producer. Uh, being able to say the word no, or understanding that it's a sentence by itself. Mm, me being able to say no, or people saying you, no to me because you, you knowing that understanding the power of the word no. Ooh, no is a powerful word. Mm. And no is a powerful word because you can switch no around and turn it on. Mm. Right? Um, I used to not be the best at saying no because I just felt like, you know what, like I always needed to look like the boss. Mm. Even when I didn't have it, I needed to look like the boss. It's just, I think it's a Baltimore thing. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> even like you, there's a certain pride that we have. Like, you got to look like the boss. And what I realized is looking like the boss will kill you if you're really not the boss. Mm. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So my no comes from a place like, it's okay for me to tell you no to things that belong to me. Mm. Like, I don't have to give you anything that is mine. Right. I have the option to do it. What I do now is, especially in business, if people want something from me, I'm going to put you in position. Mm. I'm not giving you money out of my pocket. I'm going to put you in position. Mm. I'm going to help you out. I'm going to give you an opportunity. And if you fumble on that opportunity, then the next time it's really going to be like a hard no. But I always want to see the best in people. Um, but I've just shifted what my no looks like. Mm. So I'm going to turn you on. And and if you don't operate in the same level of conviction that I operate in, then I can't do nothing with you. Whew. All right. Um, there's a few more. The power of good friends. Man. Mm, 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 mm. I got two best friends, um, Crystal and Sierra. And every single major move that I've ever made, I called them first. Mm. Every single one. They've been my friends for 20 plus years. Like these are my real best friends. One is my high school best friend and the other one is my college best friend. 
and still and now they've become best friends that's how tight we are um but what I realize is I have two women who will tell me the truth they don't care who I am to the world right they don't care like oh that's pinky code they don't give a damn about that mm-hmm. they they want to make sure that i'm operating in my best self um and in operating in my best self will come ha- some hard truths mm. so they tell me the truth they're honest with me but they're also cheerleaders and they know my deepest darkest secrets and i wouldn't have been this far in my life if it wasn't for their support for their ideas when i came up with slutty vegan they're the first two people that i called what you think about this name girl you better do it that's a great idea Every single thing that has happened in my life, they've been present for it. And you can't pay for that kind of friendship. Were they the friends that was in L.A. that let you, like, kind of stay with them when you moved to L.A.? No, that's that wasn't those friends. That was a different set of friends. Mm. So so one lives in Baltimore and the other one lives in Atlanta. But both were very present when I came up with Slutty Vegan. Um, every stage of my businesses, they were there when my restaurant caught on fire. Like, they were there. Mm. And you can't pay for those type of relationships. And I encourage every single person, if you got somebody good in your life, like, you got to keep them. Mm. Like nothing will, I'm closer to them than some of my family members. Mm. It'd be like that, right? Mm-hmm. But these are the people that I know that will take a bullet for me, no question. These are the people know that I know that will stand on the front line whether I got a lot or I have nothing at all. They're going to be the same. They're going to treat me the same. They're going to love me the same. They're going to honor me the same. And they're going to cheerlead me for me the same way that they have been since the day that we became friends 20 plus years ago. Yeah, I, I heard you speak about that in a book, and um, you were saying about especially the time you went to L.A., because mm-hmm. that kind of, like, spearheaded things. You doing a producer thing, and then you try to get a raise, and you left, but that's what kind of spearheaded this entrepreneur food thing. Mm-hmm. And I was listening. I'm like, damn, because I tell my friends, like, like especially, like, Alex, right? And I'll be like, man, I can't wait till I can pay you back. Damn. Like, you have no idea. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, you can't even put a number to it. So somebody who's mm-hmm. had, like, a successful as yourself, even when you get there, it were you able to pay them back? Was it even? Can well, it's you? not. It's not a transactional relationship. So like, you 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 can't pay that back, yeah. right? Because this is not a service for yeah. hire, right. right? What this is 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 I've looked out for my friends, mm-hmm. right? I make sure that they straight. I make sure that they have what they need. Um, but it's not a transactional relationship. The day that I sell my company. When you pick the biggest house that you want is yours. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like whatever it is you want, I'm tricking off on you. But that feel good. But it's for a great been in your corner. It's a great feeling. They never ask me for anything. Mm-mm-mm. They and and they're also successful in their own right. Like I got boss friends, right? Like one, my first best friend, she is an Emmy award winning producer, and then my other best friend, she's an account exec at Verizon. So they like they they moving and shaking. Mm. They already very established. And no, they're not the entrepreneurial friends. Which ironic, I'm the entrepreneur and they're not but guess what they do they give me a sense of reality the reality that i'm removed from Mm. because being where i am in entrepreneurship like i call i'll be like is this a lot of money is this like they tell me they keep me down to earth because there's a lot of things that i don't know Mm. now and that's just the truth as an entrepreneur as i rise and elevate they keep me current with the trends like what's happening like what's new trends that i need that will affect my business. Mm. Um, so it's definitely not transactional. I love them. Shout out to Sierra and Crystal. Um, and I couldn't have done any of this without them, without their support. It ain't transactional, but boy, when you coming up, you be like, man, I just can't wait to just, because like some support, you just can't. Like my friend, one of my line brothers, shout out to my line brother, JB. He gave me 1700 When you asked, like, I think your assistant asked me how I got started. And when I got fired, he gave me 1700 to get my first two mics, my first little uh, nice. focus. You know what I'm saying? Like things like that. It's no amount of, like, you can't, like, I can't pay that back. But I can't wait till I could be like, yo, pick up the house. You feel me? Because mm-hmm. it, it was because of you type thing. You yeah. feel me? Man, yeah. that feels amazing. Yeah. Um, All right. Uh, I don't know. Mm. Being a mother. Oh, the hardest thing that I've ever had to do. Mm. Being a mother is hard. It's one thing to be a mother to one kid. But... We got five kids in total, mm. three that are birthed and two who are my bonus baby. So that's five because we pay for all of them. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, I, and, I, and I can talk about myself because it's me. I don't always think that I was the best mother. Mm. I was an absent mom. My kids lived with me in the house. But they, they came a time where I had so much help, so many people taking care of the kids while I'm right there and I'm getting my work done that like it was hard for me to build a genuine relationship with my kids. I'm their mother. I'm always be their mother. But like they've built that agape relationship with my mom Mm. because she's their caregiver in the house. You know what I'm saying? So that used to bother me Mm. a lot. 
here I am. I'm getting all these accolades. I'm getting all these awards. My name is on every list. Like, oh my gosh, like this is a girl's dream. But when I go home, there's three little people that's looking at me like, who are you? Mm, what? Mm, mm. Crying when I pick them up. They want to be held by my mother instead of me. And that, I don't know if I'm talking to somebody, but that feeling, mm. it is not a good feeling. And I'm only being transparent about that because that is what women entrepreneurs have to deal with, especially if you're a mother and you have the means to afford help. So I had the means to afford help. I got nannies. I got help. I, all these things. But I'm missing the true essence of, like, what being a mom is. So... That's why I told you earlier in the show, now I'm more intentional about the time that I spend with my kids. Mm -hmm. Like, now I take my kids to school for the most part, right? Like, I'm I'm making sure that they eat. I'm, I'm there with them. I'm playing with them when I get off of work. And, like, usually I used to work around the clock all day, every day, not taking no breaks because I love business. But now I'm like, I got to carve out some time for my children mm -hmm. because I love business and I love my kids and I don't want to lose either. Mm. So I need to make sure that I'm making time for my kids and it's unfiltered time. It's unadulterated time. Like the time that I'm. My bad. I think, okay. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I will be upset, but we kind of need that. He took forever to, <laughs> this is a guy that blows the uh, oh, he trees and stuff. Blow leaves. Yeah, so my bad. It's I will like... be upset any other time, but like, in my mind, I'm like, it's I okay. really need this. Because you should have been here a day before. Get it done. God Listen. damn. Damn. You know what that made me just think about? It might not always be when you want it, but it's right on time. Facts. And that's that's what God does. So I'm going to just let you know And you should actually keep this in there. God is just like that. Like when you want it and you've been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and it never comes. And in a moment when you least expect it, even in the most uncomfortable times, yeah. like this is not the perfect time. This is to you, but this is the best time mm. because now you're going to see the fruit of what that entity is doing. So. Mm. That's how God moves. That's how God is moving yeah. in my life. Anyway. And to my people, we ask about like my audience. My audience is the people that understand like we want to come up. So we might have to do it in the crib where you got somebody out blowing the leaves. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like no, I love that. You know what I'm saying? We didn't see the studios and we didn't see it inside the crib. It is what it is. Yeah. Um, speaking of the time, but like it was a time, like you said, you had so much help with your family, but this is the time now for you to be that mother that you always wanted That's to be. That's what I'm doing now. And it feels so good. Mm. Man, listen. My kids be like, mommy, 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 mommy. And I'm like, I love to hear it. Yeah. Like, I know somebody else would get annoyed. But I'm like, damn. Like, I love my kids, man. Like, you know, yesterday I was talking to my daughter. And I said, my, um, I said, Dee Dee, um, why do you love my, um, what makes you love mommy? That's what I said. I said, Dee Dee, you love mommy? She said, yes, mommy. I said, um, what makes you love mommy? And she said, when you're happy. Mm. Oh, my gosh, I melted. I melted. And I'm like, damn, kids Kids are so cognizant. She says she loves when I'm happy. And I'm like, I have to be intentionally happy for my children mm. because when I'm happy for them, it is going to affect how they grow up in the world. Mm. I want to raise happy, healthy children. I don't, I don't want them to see a stressed mom. I don't want them to see a mom that's just anxious about business. I want them to see a happy, healthy mom. Mm. That 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 they want to be like because mom is just so cool. So when she said that to me, I'm like, damn, this is just reassurance that I'm doing the right thing. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the next one is loving an entrepreneur. Loving an entrepreneur is the second hardest thing. <laughs> you, that, see, you see where I'm going? <laughs> listen, and I don't tell a lie. Um, I love my husband, man. That's my best friend, but he gets on my nerves sometimes. Mm. He be like, "Why you say that in interviews? Because it's the truth." Mm. Um, and and let me tell you what happens. We both have really big egos. Mm. We are both very high strung, um, and we both are big dreamers. So most of the time, that's a recipe for everybody. Think they always right, mm. right? Um, and as young people, I'm only 36 and he's 37. We don't have many examples around us of happy, healthy marriages. Mm. We don't. Yeah. So we are learning and being the example at the same time that is incredibly difficult mm -hmm. especially if you are an entrepreneur and running two multi-million dollar businesses it ain't just mine he got a multi-million dollar business he just started a business last week another business <laughs> right bro so, you don't got enough success with okay <laughs> so we are navigating mm. through being this idea that black love still exists while still working through our own stuff, while still navigating our own multi-million dollar marriage, it ain't easy at all. And you have to really be mentally prepared to take that walk. 
So I'm so happy that I found my match and I found my equal. Um, and we get to navigate life together. Some days are easier than others, I'll be honest. Um, but I don't think that there's another person in the world that was made for me except for him. This ain't on it. I'm just random before I go to the last one. Do you think that it's still hard, but I'm just curious. Do you think it's easier to be in love or to have this relationship, so to say, when you are successful, have money? Yeah. Okay. What, what do curious. you mean, do you, I think? I'm just curious. Say it again. Do you think it's easier to be in this relationship? No. It's, no. No, no, no. You I'm think sorry. it's harder? When you have money, it's hard no matter. Money don't change the dynamic of a relationship if you're going through changes. Okay. Money don't change that. Like, you can put lipstick on a pig all day long. You understand what I'm saying? People, listen, people think when you got money that it solves all your problems. No. Because you, what they say, more money, more what? More problems. More problems. It don't mean nothing. Like, but what Drake said, more money, more problems, fuck it. I need all the problems then. <laughs> no. Th th and sometimes, listen, the other day I'm like, damn, I, I was happier when I was poor. I ain't say I want to be poor. <laughs> I didn't say I wanted to be poor, but if this is a real podcast and you want me to say some real stuff, like sometimes having less is having more. I want more. But when you think about the reality, it's like you got to choose your poison. So now it's navigating with more. How do you navigate with more so that you can maintain that happiness? Because what happens is, and I'm speaking from myself, I have so many people around me. I have so many people making decisions. I have so many places to be, so many things. And, like, life used to just be so simple. Mm. And it's not simple anymore. And sometimes people, when, when you get all the money and get all the things and get all the things, then you start looking like, I ain't really chasing money. I'm chasing peace. Mm. Like, it's the little things that I'm chasing. I'm not chasing the big things no more because I already got it. And when you get it, that, that's not the stuff that fulfills you. Mm. What fulfills you is waking up in the morning and having a clear schedule. After you've realized all of the success. Like I had a nothing kind of Sunday mm. on Sunday where I played with my kids. I didn't do anything. I cooked for my family. I made lunch for my husband. We went to Sprouts together and we went on a little Sprouts date. And like, I'm like, damn, who would have thought that I would appreciate these little things? Oh, here we go. Hold up. Mm -mm. What you got? Because you can do that because you got the money to take care of all your necessities. Right. But what I'm saying is, is I never have the opportunity to do those things. This is what I'm telling you. So when I get the opportunity to do those things, I'm like, this life okay. feels great. So I'm what I want to be clear on what I'm saying. I get you. Work for more, but have the balance where you have your days where you're just doing less. Mm. Because it's the yin to the yang. Yeah. And you need both. It seems like you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, because you ain't going to If you broke, I would hope you're not chilling on no Sunday. No, 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 no. <laughs> so That's why I said once you realize your success, yeah. right? A, a lot of my friends who have achieved a certain level of success, you know what they prioritize? It's not clothes. It's not watches. It's not jewelry. It's peace. Mm -hmm. Getting facials. Going on trips where they do nothing. Mm -hmm. going, on, going on family vacations. The things that you think that they're prioritizing, they're prioritizing their health and wellness, how to look younger, <laughs> how to feel younger, eating organic food. Mm -hmm. That's the wave. Making sure that their children are learning Mandarin and Chinese and all of these things. This it's is, the little things. It goes into the last one of the 10. Freedom is what? Freedom is not worrying about the things that plague your spirit. Freedom is being able to move about with no strings attached. Mm. Freedom is financial, to be able to do everything that your heart and soul desires um, to bring about happiness for you and your family. Mm. And freedom is the ability to get up and go without authority from other people. Mm. That's freedom. Yo, rank these three things uh, from greatest Importance to least important. Uh, love, respect, loyalty. What has to come first? Loyalty. Why? Because if if you're loyal to me, then I know that you love me. Mm. If you're loyal, and, and loyalty, I always talk about this. I don't know if somebody told you <laughs> <laughs> about this, but I'd rather you be loyal to, to me than love me. Because if you love me, you can still hurt me. Mm. <laughs> if you love me, you're going to kill me. If you love me, you could cheat on me. 
Mm. But if you loyal to loyal to me, you respect me. Mm. And respect is love. Mm. If you respect me, that means that you love me because you care about how I feel. You care about want, wanting to see me at my best. So loyalty, then what was the What was Res- the other? Loyalty, respect, love. Loyalty, respect, right. and love. Whew. All right, last question. Um, I don't know if it's going to take some time, but just curious. David Shannon is my, uh, my homie. You know David. Mm-hmm. Like mentor, big brother of mine. He has a great way of like just accepting things for who, what they are, right? Like, like I work until five o'clock. I'm going home. He don't really care about the legacy piece, like like being the richest person. He like speaks on these things, and I'm like, wow, I wish I could have part of that because I do care. I need to be able to touch everybody, so to say. Pause, because I just like that's just I do. I just what it is. I'm be honest. And I was thinking like, when is enough enough? And I thought that would be the perfect question to ask you because you're somebody who's super driven, super motivated. And I'm just curious, like, when is enough enough? It's interesting because in this season of surrender, God is going to tell me when enough is enough. And I'm, <laughs> I was in the airport and I went a children's Bible the other day. I'm like, I have become the thumper. Mm. <laughs> but what I realized is when I was doing it my way, I was in a rat race. You understand what I'm saying? And now I'm doing it God's way. God is going to order my steps and navigate when enough is enough. Mm. And it's going to be so natural. It's not curated by way of me. God is just going to say, all right, it's time. Now it's time to relax. Now it's time to enter the, to the new dimension of your family, the new dimension of your business. All right, now it's time to walk away. You need to find somebody to replace you. And I'm listening now. I didn't always listen. So... I don't know when enough is going to be enough. God knows. Mm. And when that time is going to come, I'm going to feel it and I'm going to walk in that and I'm going to accept it and I'm going to be okay with that. Mm. Yeah. Yo, I'm just curious. um, Why now? Like the the walk with God, why now? Um, This year, I have been exposed to people, places, and things that I loved and I admired that showed me a different face of them, Mm. right? So you ever love something or somebody so much, and you know in your heart, no, they wouldn't never do that to me. (laughs) Oh, no, they wouldn't never hurt me. Oh, no, they wouldn't never cross me. Oh, no, they wouldn't never. I experienced the people, the very people that I knew would never do that thing, do that thing. And not just people, places and things. So it brought me to my knees, Mm. metaphorically, But when I tell you that's the best thing that could have ever happened to me, because bringing me to my knees brought me to God. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? And I and I don't want to get too spiritual. But when did you meet God? I met him a few times when I was a kid and I was reintroduced and now I was reintroduced last year in January. I met God this year. Mm. Like I never had that feeling in my life. But I met God on my knees. Mm. So now I realize if God can get me through this, then there is nothing that he can achieve as long as I stay on my knees metaphorically. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So I am grateful for the people, places, and things that showed me the true side of who they and what they are because it did nothing but bring me closer to God. Mm. So now this season is a season of peace. It's a season of virtue. It's a season. It's my yang year. I said, Yang, Yang, it's my Yang year. Yang is the light. Yang is getting the things. Um, and, and I'm not talking about titles because I got all of that. Yang is like, it's levels to peace. Yang is continuing to be a philanthropist and helping other people. Yang is just waking up in the morning and being happy for, for no reason. That's the season that I'm walking in. And whatever comes from and with that, I'm at peace with because I've surrendered. Mm. I'm sorry. I did say last one. One more. When you look back at, I'm sorry, this is so good. I, just, I get caught up in the When you look back at, uh, let's say, 18 year old Pinky, now, what do you tell her, or what you think some things that you need to hear from her? 18 year old Pinky, I would tell 18 year old Pinky, don't change a thing. Keep being a disruptive dreamer, no matter what people think, and. People may not like or understand that and they might think you crazy, but the most successful people in the world are crazy. Mm. The most successful people in the world come up with ideas that everybody think ain't going to work. 
and you still got to have that drive and still got to have that spirit because that is the spirit that got you here. And that's the spirit that's going to continue to take you to the elevation that you know that you're supposed to be at. Mm. That's what I would tell 18 year old Pinky. Hey, this is great, man. Thank you so much for coming. This is good. This is amazing. We good, man. Yay. This is great. Pinky Cole, everybody. J Hill, J Hill podcast is a wrap. We out.